Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be doing some random little reviews. This is going to be a review roundup. I do reviews in several ways on my channel. I like to wait for like an empties video and do a lot of big reviews there, but like for products that are fairly new, I don't like jumping in and doing a video right away because you can't fully understand and know how a product is going to work for you when you use it once and so i really i hate the whole first impression like uh trend that's been happening on youtube like it's one thing if you do a first impression and like you work at it and you do a full day even then you're only getting part of the like part of the product so i like to actually use products like really work with them try several things with them before i do a review and not every review will turn into a full video on its own and so that's kind of why i want to do this a little bit more often i've been getting requests from you guys to review newer things that i've gotten but i really don't want to jump into them until i've gotten my thoughts fully straightened out on all of them so here we are i've got some elf primers i've got three new foundations and i have two mini eyeshadow palettes ready to review for you guys before we jump in you might think oh monica you're your eyeshadow doesn't match, it's looking a bit strange. So if I planned this out correctly, I did do a Spotlight on Petite palette with two of the Midas Cosmetic Quads from their coffee collection. I did the Pumpkin Spice palette on this eye and the Green Tea Macchiato palette on this eye. That video should already be up, so I'll throw it up in the cards if you would like to see that. And all I did was I added a lipstick. So this is from the Sophia Nygaard and ColourPop collection, and this is just the shade Bikini Bottom. I like the look, I think it's cool. I also did a whole video lip swatching the Sophia lipsticks with ColourPop. I'll throw that up in the cards too if you're interested. Uh, I think the, really the only ones I've been going back to have been Bury Me in Lipsticks and Bikini Bottom. But Fred was also really good. I just haven't had much chance to really like use it recently. Okay, so let's start with the primers first. I have like four new e.l.f. primers I've been trying out. Let's talk about their two new putty primers first. So they came out with a luminous putty primer and a matte putty primer. Honestly, this is not the time of year for me to use the matte putty primer. I used it like once or twice. You can see like little dips in it. But this isn't what I need right now. I really want to wait and try this out in the summer when I need matte. <laughs> and um, like for right now, like it actually did make me very matte. I will say that. But it's winter. It's dry. <laughs> it's not what I really need right now. So uh, I'm going to hold off on this until we get to the summer. And then I really want to try, try it out then. Test it out then. On the other hand, the Luminous Putty Primer is definitely what I am looking for right now. And I've used like half of this up already. I have to say, I really like this. It is very luminous. It works well under foundations. I see it does make my foundation last longer throughout the day. And I do see the glow come through, especially when I use it on my forehead and like on my cheeks over here. But it doesn't blur pores. Like in this area, I love the original putty primer because it does blur pores and really help foundation settle nicely on like my upper lip and my, my nose and on top of my nose. This doesn't work that way. It really is just for like being a luminous base so I really would recommend you really only use this where you want more glow so like for me it'd be my forehead it'd be up here maybe a little bit down here but not like in this area it definitely does not work as well as the original putty primer the original putty primer is still my all-time favorite as of this point but I did like this for strategic targeted priming which sounds very high maintenance now that I think about it Let's move on to the two eye putty primers that e.l.f. came out with, and I was kind of hoping these would be a good dupe for the MAC paint pots. Unfortunately, they, they're not as good. Um, they're decent. Uh, I don't like the white one as much, because with these, I find that I really have to, if I'm using them as an eye primer, I have to apply them all over, set it with a beauty blender, and then fully set this with powder before I can put anything on top of it. I tried using this like wet, like not setting it before I go in with shadows. I couldn't get a single good look out of it. So this isn't something I would use like not set. So I have to set it with a face powder or some kind of eyeshadow before I go into the eyeshadow on top of it. And even then it's it's not the best. I mean, you can use it as a primer. It's definitely usable. Not the worst I've used, but I'm not going to really recommend it, especially when you can get like MAC paint pots on sale at Ulta for $11 because an actual MAC paint pot will last you months. 
So if you can get it on sale, uh, normally, uh, now at least, they're included in the 21 Days of Beauty Ulta does twice a year. And I bought two paint pots during their last sale and I haven't even gotten to them yet. But even if I did, like each paint pot lasts me months. <laughs> so uh, I honestly, I would recommend those over these. I was kind of, I think my hopes might have been and maybe my expectations might have been a little too high for these. But I think the, the skin tone, the darker shade, there's a darker shade I have and then I have the skin tone one at least my skin tone one, um, works a lot better than the white. I really didn't like the white one. All right, next, let's jump into some foundations. I have tried this foundation so many different ways, and I found one particular, like, way of using it that works, but it's pretty high maintenance. I'm not gonna get rid of it, but it is very high maintenance. And that's the new Milani Screen Queen Natural Finish Foundation. I have the shade 120, which is actually like a little too light for me, but I can actually make it work. This is a very like thin, almost like a BB cream kind of uh, texture and coverage, very light coverage. You can build it up to medium, but if you build this up, it doesn't look as good. What I found is that th the way that this works best for me <laughs> is if I apply it first in a very thin layer with a brush and then I build it up just a tiny bit just like on my cheeks and then smooth out my whole face with a sponge then and only then <laughs> once I go in with the rest of my powders and everything does this look decent on me it doesn't wear for my version of a full day well if I'm home if I'm working from home if I don't leave the house if I'm not doing crazy things this looks good throughout the day if I am getting up at 5 a.m., doing my makeup at 6 a.m., catching two trains to work, working all day, catching two trains home, this looks like shit <laughs> at the end of the day. So I think it really depends on what you're looking for in a foundation. This looks gorgeous on camera and in pictures. So I would really recommend this if you're looking for like a very light to medium coverage foundation for filming or for pictures, this would be really good. If you are working a full day and you're expecting medium coverage that's going to hold in and work really well for you, th this isn't this. It's not this. <laughs> so I found the way that it works. I've also, I tried mixing this with other foundations. It does not mix well. It, it's very antisocial. It hates other foundations. I've not found a single foundation this mixes well with. So on its own, thin layers, build it up slightly, make sure you use a sponge because that extra moisture helps all of these rules but i was able to find a way that it worked for me and for my purposes because i do film quite often i take pictures quite often so for me it's actually probably useful that i keep this around but if i wasn't filming if i wasn't taking pictures for instagram i don't know if i would keep this so just keep that in mind next we have the foundation from wet and wild and this is their photo focus dewy foundation i have the shade soft ivory which is a little too dark for me. I had to lighten this slightly, but I think it's my closest shade match within this line. And this was just okay. I feel like I liked the original foundation more than this one, because whenever I try this, even when I was just like home all day, like giving it the bare minimum, I would find that I would crease really badly around my smile lines, that it would look really dry and cakey. Even when I went in with my most moisturizing primers, it looked, I ended up like flaking out just here. Like the rest, like from here up, it actually looked really good. Like on my forehead, it looked really nice. On my nose, it looked really nice. But like right here, Maybe because I, like, I have to talk a lot for my job. I have a lot of meetings. I have a lot of phone calls I have to take. But like here, it just looked terrible, no matter what I did with it. And when I mixed this with other foundations too, same thing. It would always break down right here. And for me, this is kind of unusable. Like with the Milani foundation, I found a way that makes it actually work and doesn't look bad. But with this, even when I'm like babying it and like staying at home all day and not doing anything it still looks bad and I have combination skin so I get really dry skin like right here a little bit on the tip of my nose but then like right here gets really oily like on my upper lip especially and it just looked bad like here and I have both skin types like in this area right here so for me I think this is going to be a declutter it, I couldn't find a way to make it work. I used a bunch of different primers. I used a bunch of different 
uh, powders, everything. It just, it just didn't work for me. Now a surprising foundation that I picked up just like on a whim when I went into Sally's one day. This is the Collab uh, Bright Spark Radiant Foundation. And to me, this actually behaves a lot like the ABH Luminous Foundation. Yeah, and this was $11. <laughs> I have the shade Porcelain 01, so I think it's the lightest shade. I know I'm not the palest person ever, so I think they need to work on their shade range. I actually, I don't know if they're discontinuing this line, because when I saw this at my Sally's, a lot of collab stuff was on deep clearance. So I hope they're not... <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I hope they're not discontinuing this because I actually I like this foundation. It does give me a little bit of trouble like on my chin. I do have some texture down here. So like right down here, I see um, some trouble spots at the end of a long day. But the rest of my face, even like going to work, two trains there, work all day, two trains back. This looks great. And I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, why have I not like tried this before? It's honestly such a great dupe for the ABH Luminous Foundation with the shit ABH has been pulling recently. You should probably buy it from Sally's instead. <laughs> and it just, it's good. I'm going to keep trying it. I'm going to keep trying to mix it with other foundations, see what else I can find. But I was pleasantly surprised by this and it really makes me want to try out other products from this line. Last but certainly not least, we have some mini eyeshadow palettes. And the first one I want to talk about is actually one of the last Spotlight on Petite palette series that I did, and that was on the Huda Beauty Nude Light palette. And I didn't give my full review of the palette in the Spotlight on Petite palettes video that I did because I did a shorter, like more musical kind of version of it, and I didn't do a voiceover or anything. So I wanted to give my thoughts on this palette as a whole now, and I have to say I love this palette. It's very pink leaning, and I don't tend to like reach for very pinky or purpley kind of palettes, but this is a gorgeous palette. And every time I wore this palette, I got compliments. I posted this palette. I did a look on Instagram. I had three of my friends message me and say, that looks gorgeous. What are you wearing? I wore this for like my New Year's uh, look. I think I did a, a glam New Year's look. And then I did when I actually went to New Year's with my boyfriend's family, I wore this and I got compliments there too. It's just a beautiful, beautiful palette. I love every shade in here. It's a perfect condensed version of everything that I would need for like a nice soft bright light look and uh, I think this is going to be one of my new go-to travel palettes I'm probably going to be traveling a decent amount this year we'll see ha 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 not anymore uh but this is definitely like a new like like soft natural go-to palette and I'm, I'm shocked that I liked it this much all right and last but not least we have these two palettes from Fenty and they actually can click together and actually stay together but I'm gonna break them apart for the purposes of this review. <laughs> I have the new Fenty Beauty Snap Shadows Mix and Match eyeshadow palettes. I have number five Peach and number six Smoky. I really saw these palettes and really wanted this Smoky palette first. I saw these shades and I was like oh I really want to try these because I have never before now I have never tried Fenty shadows ever. And so I was like, I really want to try them out. They have plenty of palettes here. I want to try them out. So I really wanted the Smoky. And while I was checking out on Sephora.com, I saw the other shades and I saw they had this peach version. And I was like, oh, I, I want it. I need it. I want this peach version. And so I got it like on a whim with the Smoky version. And I have to say, I really like the peach palette and it's really inspiring me to do another battle of the peach palettes. Every shade is pigmented and they blend and the shimmers are gorgeous. I love that it's half shimmers and half matte. I love this palette, it's so good. And I don't like the Smoky palette. I was so disappointed in this palette. I, I need to do like an actual look on camera, maybe in an upcoming Get Ready With Me. But when I tried these shades, they were patchy. They didn't blend. And especially this matte black, I need a nice matte black for a smoky palette. And it was patchy. And I, I did a look with this and I looked like shit. <laughs> no matter what I did, I couldn't like make these shadows work for me and it was just really disappointing there's like two shimmer shades and like one kind of glitter shade ish up here oh my god i don't know what happened because the peach palette was so good and then this palette 
was trash. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Uh, I don't know if Fenty is just that hit or miss with the shadow formula. I don't know if maybe it's because these are so dark that these were harder to formulate. I don't know. But these were so bad. And I was so sad because I was so looking forward to this palette. And it just let me down. Also, these two brown shades, let me help her a little bit. This one and this one, they're almost basically the same shade. Like, I actually swatched them and they looked almost the same in person. And then I went online because I thought maybe I got a dud. Maybe they accidentally put the same shadow in here twice. But I looked online. That's how it's supposed to be. There's really no difference between those two shadows. Let's let's swatch them just for just for shits and giggles. So these are the two shadows. Almost no difference. Yeah, I see that. One is slightly darker than the other one, but when you use it on the eye, they look the same. <sighs> they look the same. So I really can't speak to the quality of Fenty shadows as a whole just because I don't know how inconsistent they are. But this peach palette is gorgeous. I love it. I am going to be doing another Battle of the Peach palette soon because I love this so much. And then this one was trash. I'm actually so sad that I got this palette. So that is everything I want to talk about in this review roundup. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've tried any of these products. If you want to see more review roundups like this in the future for products that are not quite in my empties videos yet, but also I haven't really put on Instagram or anything, let me know if you like the series because I can definitely do more of these and create a playlist in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.